see, the thing about awareness is awareness is self-corrective, right? So if you watch your personality, just the watching of it corrects it, right? The old thing that I always say to make that point is a guy said to his dentist, you know, when I tap this tooth that hurts, what do I do? And the dentist says, don't tap the tooth, okay? <laughs> So if you just start paying attention to your crazy personality, the fact that you're witnessing its craziness changes it, right? The fact that you're seeing it for what it is, right? Instead of being it and thinking that it is doing the correct thing by surviving all the time and being self-righteous and being a control freak and all the rest of the stuff it does, right? When you're being that, you can't see it. You justify it, you rationalize it, you tell stories about it, right? When you wake up and you begin to see the personality, right, just the fact that you're watching it be crazy corrects it because the personality is constantly changing just like everything else is constantly changing, right? So by paying attention to it and watching it, the way it changes, changes. It starts changing in the direction of going sane. It starts changing in the direction of stopping being crazy. And, and paying attention to what's actually happening instead of what you think or feel about it so that you can respond to it instead of react to it, right? So you start to learn about the, how upsets work. You start to learn about how the default state works in terms of when you're not using thinking to do practical things, it's using you. It's using you to do what it wants you to do. It's using you to follow its judgments and evaluations. It's using you to speak its upsets. It's using you to, co to struggle with your life. And this causes a, a suffering, this causes an unhappy experience of existence, right? And so instead of just continuing to try and change it and control it, hoping that it someday it'll work, right? The definition of insanity, right? Doing the same thing over and over, um, imagining that it's gonna work someday. So instead of doing that, you're paying attention now and the fact that you're paying attention, you're paying attention as the real you. You're paying attention as something that actually exists that is unlimited, right? And the personality is the awareness, but the personality separated itself from the awareness so it could have a human life. And it had to forget its identity to experience being in the world as a human being. You can see, if you look at it, that if that didn't happen, right, how could you experience a human life? If the awareness continued to be the awareness, right, um, and it, and it got, came into the world in a non-dual way and saw everything as it, that wouldn't be a human life. A human life, you have to have object, you know, subject object. You have to have duality for a human life. That's what a human life is, a dualistic experience. There's me and everything that's not me, and that's, that's the game, right, that gets played. But when you wake up and you discover your true nature, while the personality continues to exist, right, and the mind continues to exist, right, it starts to readjust and reorganize itself to be consistent with the truth. That happens naturally. You don't even have to do anything. You're not, you're not trying to do that. Just by paying attention, that's what happens, right? Just by paying attention, that's what happens. You know, and, and it's, this, isn't like, this is not stepping outside of your body. This is discovering you were never in it. <laughs> The truth is, there is no self in this physical body. You can't find one there. You can't show me one there. There is no such thing. What? Personality lives in your mind. Yeah. So you can see when you start to get into this that, that we're living in a dream. When you, what you think, what the average person thinks is real is a dream. And when you start waking up, you see the difference between that and the way things actually are, right? You start to realize you're, you're not in the body, the body's in your awareness. That's the truth, right? And you can actually experience that. If you become aware of your entire body, right? Which you can do, if you become aware of your entire body, how can you be in it and be aware of the whole thing unless the body's in your awareness? Right? So the truth gets revealed through the practice of meditation because you're calming the mind, relaxing the body, and when you calm the mind and relax the body and you move your attention away from the thinking activity, it becomes possible to actually see what's going on instead of what you think, right? That's making contact with reality. That's experiencing the truth. Now, I was talking on Sunday about a teaching that uh, Lama Lina, who was a, a high spiritual teacher, 
of a tradition, a certain Buddhist tradition. Uh, she did a teaching that I witnessed and I found it very useful. And so on Sunday, I you know, replicated that teaching. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about it here, right? Because I think it's very valuable. This process of practicing meditation is a process where gradually, if we practice consistently, we'll discover that what we are is not the personality, at least not at this point, right? What we are is not the personality. And what we are uh, is the awareness itself, right? And not only are we the awareness itself, but through the practice, we can begin to live from there instead of just know about it. Living from there works. Living from there is a life that's fulfilled. It's a life where there's happiness, satisfaction, and peace, right? But in order to live from there, we have to, we have to go through a process in which the personality begins to be seen as unreal and therefore you stop having certainty about being that because you, it starts to be seen as unreal, it starts to be seen for what it really is, right? And when we're practicing meditation, the personality starts to be seen as unreal and what starts to be seen as real is the awareness itself, the natural state, right? But it's a gradual process. One of the things that can help the process is to notice, first of all, so this is the, these are the stages of this process. The first thing that has to happen is you have to recognize awareness, right? And you can't, and you can't bullshit it. You have to actually recognize awareness. You have to actually see the awareness, be clear that you've made contact with the awareness, be clear that you've seen the awareness, right? That's called Kensho and Zen, right? So you're practicing meditation, you're moving your attention away from the thinking activity, and when it's away from the thinking activity, it becomes more possible to notice the awareness that's there. Aware of the body breathing, right? That's a lot less activity than thinking, right? And because that's the case, it's possible to notice, wait a minute, I'm aware of the body breathing, now I only have to take one step. I am the awareness, aware of the body breathing. See, in the normal course of events, people think they have awareness instead of they are awareness, right? Most human beings say, I am aware, right? I am aware. They think awareness is a characteristic they have, right? The truth be told, right, uh, awareness is your true nature and the person who thought they were, were aware doesn't even exist. Right? So that's the truth that gets discovered gradually in time. And then the next thing is to practice checking to see if the awareness is always there. Because if I'm going to trust being that in my life, I want to know that it's always there, right? I want to know that it's real and it does ex actually exist, right? And so what you can do, not in formal meditation, but in your everyday life, what you can do, and you can only do this after you've recognized the awareness, right? So that's the first thing. Until that happens, you can't do this, so don't worry about it until that happens. Once that happens, you recognize awareness, right? Then. What I mean by recognizing awareness is right now you could look at it and see it. I say you could look at it and see it, right? But I don't mean you, the person, can look at it and see it. The reality is that it's actually seeing itself. You know, awareness is aware of itself, right? So you can look at the awareness as awareness and see the awareness. You can look at the awareness as awareness and recognize the awareness, right? That's the first step. After you've done that, the next step is to see is that awareness always there? The teaching says it's never not there. It's always there, it is my true nature, I can trust it, right? I can be it, I am already being it, right? But to, my, to, to let go and allow myself to be it consistently, I wanna know that it's always there. And so what I can do is start to practice as many times as I can remember in the day to stop and look and see, is it still there? To check and see, is it still there? Is it still there? Is it there when I'm peeing? Is it there when I'm eating? Right? Is it there when I'm on the toilet? Is it there when I'm fighting with my wife? Is it there when I'm driving my car? Right? Because if it's true that it's always there, you should be able to check and see it any time under any condition because it's always there. And if you do that every day, as often as you can remember, the first thing you'll discover if you go to practice this is that you won't remember very much. You won't remember very often to check. Right? It's the same thing with when you practice formal meditation. A lot of people, when they're new at meditation, they sit there and think for a long time before they realize they're not watching the breath anymore. Okay? So, so it's even worse if you're trying to pay attention in your everyday life because there's a lot of activity, right? So you really have to have strong intention to do this practice, right? 
And you have to pay attention in such a way where throughout the day, as many times as you can remember to look and see, is the awareness here? Okay, it's here. Just keep doing that, right? And by doing that, what starts to happen is certainty about the awareness starts to occur, right? Because it's always there. You start to trust it. You start to know it's there even when I am not looking at it. The example I gave on Sunday, I said my stepson, when he was a little boy, when we used to go places in the car, he used to say, do we know how to get back home? You know, because he was young, he didn't understand yet, you know, and, and so, but after we took enough trips, right, and we kept telling him, no, we know how to get back home, we know how to get back home, he started realizing that you don't have to check anymore, he knows the house is there, like that. The same thing is true with this. If you check it consistently enough, not only will you know that it's there all the time, but you will realize that you are it all the time. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, all you gotta do is look. I mean, you can do it while you're doing other things because the awareness is there while you're doing other things, right? And so you're waking up to being awake. You're waking up to being awake consistently, right? By practicing this way. And if you do it consistently as many times as you can during the day, the effect of being awake will begin to happen. What I mean by that is you'll begin to experience a different experience of your life because you're spending more time awake than you are asleep. You're spending more time seeing things as they are than seeing things the way you think they are, right? And just by virtue of doing that, things start changing. You start to see things get smoother, you know, less conflict, less upset, more enjoyment, more peace of mind starts to occur. But the challenge will be how many times a day can you remember to do it? I mean, I, 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 I suggest that you try this just to see what I'm talking about. How many times a day can you remember to do it? But first, you have to recognize the awareness, right, before you can do this practice. And if you continue to do it as many times as you can remember to do it during the day, certainty will start to occur. So the uncertainty about being a personality will become more uncertain, less real, and the certainty about being what you are in the natural state as awareness will become more certain and more real. Can you see if you keep doing that, eventually it'll just be this way. Right? Eventually you don't have to check anymore, just like my stepson, you don't have to check. You know it's there, you know the awareness is there. And you can experience it any time, you can experience it any time. And you wanna practice experiencing it, especially when you're in the states of mind that cause suffering. You want to experience it, especially when you're in the states of mind that call suffering, because that's what this whole practice is about, is to end suffering, to experience transcendental wisdom. Right? Transcendental wisdom means that you now have the wisdom to know the truth about what you are, and that transcends what you thought. That transcends who you thought you were, right? And it's a different experience now. This is transcendental wisdom that we're practicing. And the point of it is to wake up and end suffering, and be able to enjoy the fact that you exist in the world, enjoy a human life, right? And the final exam for this practice will be, the, will be death. The final exam for this practice will be the death of the body, because the teachings tell us that there is no death in reality, that when you realize your true nature, your true nature is not physical, your true nature doesn't have a, a beginning or an end, and therefore it doesn't die. Now, in the state of mind that you're in, that won't grok. You can hear it, you like the idea, right? But you don't believe it, you still believe you're gonna die, right? That's how profoundly that idea is embedded in your mind and in your brain, that this is a temporary affair, and you and the body are the same thing, and when it goes, you go too. Well, if you practice meditation consistently, and you do it the way it's meant to be done, and you study the teachings, the time will come when you will be confident enough, right, and have enough certainty about your true nature that when the body dies, you can watch it. You can watch it. That's one of the things that my teacher up in Ithaca said that uh, he knew that he was onto something when he had a glimpse of his own body being dead and he wasn't in it. Yeah. Yeah, that's, what, that's the way, I, I stole that from Lama Lena. Yeah. <laughs> what she did was she wanted to show the people what she was talking about in terms of certainty, and she had everybody stand up and walk around and sit down again. And she said, did any, was anybody afraid you were gonna float away during that time? 
nobody said they were. And the reason they weren't afraid they were going to flow away is because of gravity, right? So we trust gravity, don't we? You, you don't have to keep checking to see if gravity's still there, right? You know it's there. You're certain about it, right? You, you can trust it. You can, you, you can work with it and so forth. So this is the same thing. You know, you learn to trust gravity because when you were a little baby and you're sitting in your high chair eating, you tried this and you said, oh, that was, that's neat, that's neat, let me do that again. You know, and then your, the, the parent said, stop doing that, and you did it anyway. Because you were learning about gravity, right? But after a while, even a child realizes, if I let go of my body, I'm gonna fall like this bottle, see? But you don't have to think about gravity at, at all, do you? You don't have to think about it at all. You just know gravity's there. In the same way, if you practice checking to see if your awareness is still there, right? The time will come, just like gravity, when you will not only know it's there, you will be it. That's the final thing, is to discover not only is awareness there, but awareness is what you are. Another word for awareness is what it's like to be you. That's awareness, what it's like to be you. And so the practice of meditation is a practice along with the teaching, which is necessary. But if you make a commitment to this and you do it every single day, your life will transform. You will start to experience a different state of being. You'll start to experience a different experience of being in the world, a different experience of your relationships with people. And you'll start moving towards a state of well-being, physical well-being, emotional well-being and psychological well-being and so the practice of meditation and these teachings are psychotherapy i'm a psychologist so i can say things like that right this practice and these teachings are psychotherapy just by doing the practice you will train your mind to go sane and just by doing this practice you will start to experience what works in your relationships and practice that instead of what doesn't work you know, you'll start to be able to get up in the morning without a load on your shoulders, right? But it's not going to be free lunch. You have to practice this and you have to make a commitment to the teachings, to study the teachings. And that's going to be challenging because your mind's not interested in this. Your mind's interested in getting what it wants and surviving. It's not interested in being happy or peaceful. So if you want to be happy and peaceful, you're going to have to train your mind to stand down and experience the truth about what you are. And as you experience the truth about what you are, happiness will be there. It'll just be there. There's nothing you will have to do to get the happiness. You can save a lot of money. Right? Because most people think happiness is getting what you want, right? And so you can save a lot of money. 